Hey everyone, we're kicking into day three at Gettysburg here. And day three is known by that epic name of Pickett's Charge. And what you had is after, after the day two action, which was three hours of terrible fighting where the Confederates almost broke through the Union line. On day three, Robert E. Lee wasn't ready to throw in the towel just yet. He wanted to make one final attack. Now James Longstreet wasn't too keen on that attack. He thought it might be better to go down to Maryland and go fight a battle someplace of their own choosing, a place where they're gonna have the high ground. But Robert E. Lee wanted to fight it out right here, right now. And he did not want to let it up to any other chance of, of some other place, some other location, some other battle. This is where he wanted to finish the Civil War. Sadly for him, it ended uh, kind of in the wrong way, kind of in the wrong fashion for the Confederates. Now, the war does continue after Gettysburg, but the war takes an entirely new meaning after Gettysburg. Now, what we have here is Robert Lee's monument at Gettysburg. And specifically, its location is set for day three at Gettysburg. And you see this entire thing is called the Virginia Monument. You have these soldiers here that are Virginia soldiers. But this is the right flank of the Pickett's Charge attack. So soldiers move from this location and they move towards the copse of trees or the clump of trees in the distance that you see in the middle of the picture right there. There were 12,000, at least 12,000 men that are heading towards that copse of trees. And if you ever get here to Gettysburg, you also want to take a look at down in the distance. I can't really show it to you here, but down about maybe half a mile, three quarters of a mile, you have a fantastic monument called the North Carolina Monument. North Carolinians, Virginians were the primary forces that went on this Pickett's Charge attack around four o'clock uh, on day three at Gettysburg. It all starts with two hours of cannon fire. The Confederates had their cannon located all around this tree line here, and they had to fire about a mile and a half and in this distance towards the Union defense, towards the center of the Union line. Now, they wanted to break it up as best they could, hoping to loosen up the defense so that when they finally sent their foot soldiers across the field, they wouldn't have much fighting to do. Turns out that they actually overshot and once the cannon started shooting, it was the biggest bombardment that the United States have ever seen. You couldn't even see anything on this field. So across this entire field, you just see smoke in the air. You wouldn't see anything. You had no idea if the shots were actually hitting their intended targets. But in reality, they were completely and totally overshooting and going right past those infantry the Union had set up behind a rock line. And then finally, after two hours of the cannon fire that really didn't hit much of anything, they finally sent out 12,000 soldiers from here to about three quarters of a mile down in that direction. These Virginians, these North Carolinians, and they started heading towards that copse of trees. Lee thought, I better give them some kind of waypoint, some kind of area to aim for. And so that's where they're heading towards. The tough part for them, the Union had plenty of ammunition left, plenty of cannon fire left. And as they started to move, Upon this field in front of us, as they started, as the Confederates started to move that way, they have no cover, they have no trees really, they have no rocks to get behind, and they're getting rocked by a first off hollow shot that's exploding in the air and blasting shrapnel everywhere, and that eventually once they get close they have these bowling balls of the solid shot cannonballs, and then also they're facing canister fire once they get very, very close. Most of these soldiers didn't even get close to making a good, good, good attack upon that rock line that the Union had across the field. So Pickett's Charge, just by looking at the field, how open it is, it was an absolutely stupid decision. Now, for Lee, his men had done fantastic things throughout the entire war. Why couldn't they do it now? Why couldn't they pull off a fantastic attack and just achieve success like they always had? So sadly for them, it didn't work out to plan. There might be some reasons why Lee decided to make this attack and not listen to Longstreet, but altogether, big, huge, terrible decision. And it's something that for somebody like Lee, he usually didn't make bad decisions, but he certainly made one here.